Hey, welcome to my kitchen. Hope you have a nice cup of coffee. You're ready to uh, listen to a little bit about the diffusion of innovation. This is just gonna be a really quick synopsis, really to help focus you as you read through the chapters of the diffusion of innovation text this week. It's a lot of reading and I wanna help you to focus on what to really key in on uh, in, in that textbook. So I'm going to be going over that and I'm going to be talking a little bit about that, the failure, the communication technology failure paper that you're going to be doing. So let's get started. Let's see, where is my, there we go. Okay, so what is the diffusion of innovations? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And really specifically, why do some sex technologies succeed while others fail? And that's the beauty of the diffusion of innovations. It allows you to be able to uh, analyze that to see exactly why some will fail. And that's what you'll be doing in your paper later this week. So the uh, diffusion is derived from a Latin word that means to spread out. And so the diffusion is kind of the macro concept of the diffusion of innovations where it's concerned with the spreading of an idea or the spreading of a technology in society. Uh, the other concept with the diffusion of innovation that you need to focus in on is the adoption, and that's the micro aspect or process of the diffusion of innovation, and that's that individual is adopting that technology or using that technology or um, adopting and buying into that idea. So the diffusion um, of innovations has four basic elements to the process of, of diffusion. And that's where it's the acceptance of an innovation, a new product, service, idea, or even practice that's spread by communication channels, whether that's mass media, marketers, word of mouth, face-to-face -face interactions with people over a period of time to members of a social system or, or even a target market. Uh, it doesn't have to be the world, the global society. It could even be as much focusing in on a congregation or even a classroom or, or a, your department or your college. Um, but that's that society. So those four elements, the innovation communicated through certain channels over time among members of a social system. So, um, Ev Rogers talks about characteristics of an innovation and what researchers have found is that there's five key characteristics that will um, point to whether uh, that innovation will actually diffuse in society. The first one is the relative advantage and that's the degree to which potential consumers perceive a new product as or innovation as superior to what's already there. So we know that a cell phone, for example, there's innovations of cell phones that we've seen throughout the years. And so what is the advantage of adopting this new cell phone technology over the previous one? There's got to be some advantage to it before it will take off. The second one is the compatibility, and that's the degree to which potential consumers feel that a new innovation, an innovation is consistent with their present needs, values, or practices. Is it compatible with what they know? Then it's going to go. The third one is complexity, and that's the degree to which a new product is difficult to understand or use. So obviously, the harder it is to understand if there's assembly required, and it's from Ikea, and it's in doesn't make any sense, or you know, it's in all the instructions are in Chinese, and that's gonna be very difficult for that technology to diffuse. So um, the complexity level needs to be low. Um, an example of this would be a camera. You know, when, when, camera, when the camera first was invented, it was very complex. Uh, and so it was very hard to understand. But as innovations of the camera progressed, they had drop-in film that made it easier to load film. Uh, they added the flash, built-in flash, auto focus zoom and different lenses that were all included in one and they added those digital technologies and they took away the film and just had a digital um, image and so it made it easier it's so easy that now we all have a really complex camera that we carry around in our pockets uh, connected to our phone so there's 
that you can see the relative advantage of that, the compatibility with what you know, complexity is low, and, um, and then finally, the next one characteristic is trialability. Can you try it out? I think that's why apps are uh, diffused so quickly is because it's, it's easy to try it out because you just have to download it onto uh, an existing piece of hardware that you already have, which is your cell phone or your tablet or your computer. And so, but that trialability is important because that, um, it, that shows that there's, you know, it shows that you can use it. So another example of that would be going into the Apple store and trying out the Apple Watch or the new latest Apple, you know, the iPhone. Um, that you can touch it, feel it, and see it. Um, that's that trial ability. Um, the final characteristic is observability, and that's the ease with which a product's benefits or app, uh, attributes can be observed. That's why marketers like to use those opinion leaders, those celebrities that you see, and they'll send them their products, their Apple Watch, or their you know latest technology that they're trying to sell. Um, because if we see the other people that we respect are using that technology, um, then we can see, hey, they're using it, so um, I, we observe that it works for them, then it may work for us, we may risk purchasing that new innovation um, because we believe it'll work for us if it works for them, basically. Um, diffusion researchers have found that a population can be broken down into five different adoption segments based on their propensity to adopt a specific innovation. So the adoption process begins with a tiny number of visionary, imaginative innovators. They're, these are the people that often lavish great time, energy, and money on developing new ideas and gadgets. So they're the ones that are actually developing. They're the ones that are right on the cusp of what's happening in that technology or in, in that um, arena that is going to be adopted, whether it's an idea, a product, or a service. Once the benefits start to become apparent after those innovators have, um, have really jumped on that, then that's when early adopters leap in. They're on the lookout for a strategic leap forward in their lives. Those early adopters uh, want to see advantages and they tend to see the risk as low because they're financially more secure they're more educated, generally speaking. Uh, they're very confident personally, and they're better informed about technology because they know how to research it, and they know how that will fit in with their lives. So assuming the product or behavior leaps that chasm that's in this graphic, it may eventually reach the majority audience. The early majorities are pragmatists, they're comfortable with moderately progressive ideas, moderately being a key word, um, but won't act without solid proof of the benefits of that technology or that innovation. They're followers who are influenced by mainstream influence and wary of fads, but they take their cue from those early adopters, so those, um, those majority that early majority is kind of leaning and seeing that and they want to kind of jump on bandwagon so they're the first kind of majority to jump on that bandwagon and adopt the late majority are conservative pragmatists who hate taking risks generally they're uncomfortable with new ideas um, and so they're really they, they're just kind of, they're late in the game. They're, they're not ones to jump on first, but once they see everybody, it's working for everybody else, then the late majority will jump on board, but only after they see everybody else, it's working well for them. Meanwhile, the laggards. And the laggards hold out to the bitter end before they adopt a new technology. An example of this would be the adoption of HDTV. So some of you remember when that happened several years ago, the government, mandated that uh, all television stations broadcast in high definition or HD TV. So that meant that the old TV receivers would not be able to receive that signal. So the government uh, sent out to everybody coupons, $25 coupons to buy a converter box for their TV. The laggards are the ones that wouldn't even go out and buy the HD converter box until 
they had no, absolutely no <laughs> TV signal on their TV. And then they went out only after they were forced. And so these are the people that just, hey, it works well for me, I'm not gonna change. I like the way it is, I don't need new technology. This old technology works fine, it's still working, and they're not gonna adopt. And so that's what that uh, laggard is gonna be. So when thinking about these different, these different groups, don't imagine your job as shifting people from one segment to another, it doesn't work that way. It's best to think of the memberships of each of these segments as static. They're, and so innovation spreads when they meet the needs of each segment. And so for the example of the laggards with the uh, finally adopting that HDTV, it finally met their need because they wanted to watch TV, so they finally adopted it when that met, need was met. Does that make sense? Um, Graphically, diffusion looks something like an S-shaped curve. Here's, here's an example of the Beanie Baby, the S-shaped curve for the Beanie Babies. Some of you may remember those as kids, or uh, maybe you uh, collected them, or your kids collected them. So when social researchers first started looking at how innovations uh, diffused through, this, through society in the 1940s, they noticed that the pattern of spread of a new technology was very similar to how infections spread through populations. I thought that was kind of interesting. And that's to say the rate of spread starts off slowly, accelerates through the mid-range of the graph, and then slows down and levels off, uh, forming that S-shape curve. So the S-shape is caused by the fact that the innovation, whether it's a technology or a disease, as first to come in from outside the social system. And, um, and that means relatively few people are susceptible to begin with. But once the innovation is established in the system, more and more people come into contact with it and the rate of adoption increases. Or in the example of the diseases, that the more, as more and more people come in contact with that disease, the more and more people get the disease and it's a serious issue. But at some point, eventually, there's so many people in the social system that have adopted that innovation that the system runs out of new people to adopt it. And so then it, it levels off after a while, and eventually it stops. Um, another important insight is that um, impersonal marketing methods like advertising and media stories may spread information about new innovations, but it's conversations that spread adoption. I see that my battery is about to die, so I'll plunge a second. You know, you have marketers in, that are reaching out, and that, that's really important to, for a new technology to diffuse. But when you're looking at uh, buying a new technology, of course, you're a researcher, so you're going to research that technology and how it fits into your lifestyle. What's the compatibility and the relative advantage and the complexity of that? And you're going to go through those characteristics of innovation yourself as you're researching. You've already done that many times in your life. But ultimately, when you see someone, that trialability and that observability, you get to touch it and feel it. But then you see your friends and you hear that your friends or your peers or your um, colleagues are using that particular innovation, then that's gonna have a lot more weight than reading an article online because you trust their opinion. And so what researchers are finding more and more is that it's between the consumers, that word of mouth, that face-to-face, -face, those personal relationships that are making a huge impact. And I know that's not nothing new for you. It's really big. And so that rate of adoption is really important. I found this video that I thought was interesting. So traditionally, traditional theory is that innovation's adoption rate is fits a bell curve. But what's happening now is that the rate of innovations are rapidly increasing. So to reach critical mass, uh, it took 38 years for critical mass to be reached in radio. For television, it was just 13 years for 50 million viewers to start using television. But now, as more and more digital technologies are coming into play, that critical mass is hitting really fast. So now you have social media and you have apps that are diffusing in a matter of weeks or months to reach critical mass. So what does that mean for us as we are um, 
analyzing these technologies to see whether they're going to be successful or whether they're going to fail. It's that um, we have to understand that how people communicate is a vastly in impacting the way these technologies are being adopted and are being diffused. And so it's very important to understand that. I thought this um, video kind of demonstrated that pretty well. So that rate of adoption. An example of this is uh, the telephone. So the telephone was invented about 140 years ago, really more than 140 years ago. The people who first adopted the telephone, it was like, it was kind of the chicken and the egg that you had a telephone and um, you know, it was the complexity, the compatibility with what they knew. It wasn't anything. They didn't know a telephone. They knew about telegraphs and they knew about that kind of technology, but not about this. And so, and you know, you buy a phone and then who do you, you know, if you're an innovator, then who do you call? And um, so there's that issue. So you had early people that were adopting telephone, but once it reached, so you then, if you can imagine that bell curve, once more and more people started realizing the advantages of having a, having a telephone in their home or in their business, then more and more people started adopting, more and more people started calling each other, realized, hey, this would be helpful for us to reach out and talk to different people until pretty much everyone now has a telephone. Not so much in their home, but that's the innovation of uh, technology, that now we don't need them in our homes anymore because they're on our bodies, they're in our pockets, they're in our, our, our bags. Uh, so they're with us at all times. And so um, there's that, the rate of adoption um, and that kind, of, that kind of explains that S curve, how it, at the end, everybody's adopted it and now we have, um, we've reached critical mass and now the innovations that are taking place are just innovations um, of that old technology that people will be adopting, but they're not as rapidly um, emerging as they were at the very beginning of that technology. So let's talk about the uh, technology failure paper that you're going to be um, that you're going to be looking at. Um, based on your readings this week, you're going to be writing about tech a technology that you predict will fail. You're going to take the innovation of your choosing, a communication technology of your choosing, and apply the specifics of the diffusion of innovation theory to that communication technology to prove that it will fail, or to prove that if these factors were included, um, it, would, it would fail. So here's the specifics of the paper, um, or some of the kind of the specifics of the paper are in your syllabus. You can take a look at APA and that kind of thing. But you're choosing a communication technology that you believe will fail. Um, and I'm really going back to that. I'm not going to give you a list of technologies. You can Google that recent technologies in the last 12 months is really what I want you to look at. Or technologies that maybe haven't emerged that are just on the cusp. Those startup companies, uh, take a look at those. Um, that um, CES uh, 17, 2017, you can take a look at some of those videos of that new technology that's coming out. Then what's the background of that communication technology that you're exploring? There might be some history to that. There might be some um, explanation you need to give about the company that's the startup company, the kickstart company that's coming up with it. Uh, then what are the characteristics of that innovation? So you're applying the diffuse, those Remember, I, met, I just mentioned those five characteristics of, the, of an innovation. You're applying those characteristics to your innovation and analyzing it that way. Then you're looking at how do the adopter cat categories fit in with that particular innovation. And finally, you're looking at the consequences of that innovation failing or succeeding. And it may be a big consequence. It may not be a big, but you're analyzing that. You're deciding that. I want you to come to me if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to uh, text me if it's a quick question. If it's a little bit lengthier, feel free to email me and I'll be checking those emails this week. And, uh, but you definitely need to jump on that and decide what technology do you wanna analyze so as you're reading and learning from the text, uh, you can kind of apply it. I think that'll help speed things along for you. Uh, but I do want you to come to me. Don't go to each other if you don't know. Uh, come directly to me. I'm, that's why I'm here. And uh, to help you learn, to help you grow, to, and to give any 
um, clarifications that you may need. So you have my cell phone number, you have my email address, you can text me, um, and any one of those methods is fine, and I look forward to talking to you. Now, we will meet on Thursday at 8.30 Eastern time, and we'll meet for probably just about 30 minutes. So I'll go over any clarifications from that discussion question that will be due on Wednesday. Won't be a long discussion question, but it'll be applying uh, the diffusion to a particular uh, technology that I give you. And um, so, but Thursday then I'll have some Q&A time for you uh, during our teleconference as well. And then that communication technology paper will be due on Sunday by 11.59. All right, it was good seeing you all, or good being seen, I guess. And I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much.